Hi, my name is Steve Snap, and I wanted to thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this episode on what I call risk-free prototyping. As always, I have several other videos that are related to this subject, and so if you want to learn more about the Salesforce platform license, or you want to learn more about uh, other strategies that we use to reduce risk and maximize success, then there's articles and blogs and other things like that that you can certainly peruse. But the main idea behind a risk-free prototype is number one, we start with a free trial of Salesforce platform. Now what we mean by a free trial is not a sales gimmick. It's not a 30 day trial where we're trying to artificially enforce or um, force a decision. It's actually a trial that may last in some cases up to a year. And I've had some clients go up to two years if necessary. So the first idea behind the risk-free prototype is we want to work with you to clearly identify the problems that you have in your business and actually create solutions for those problems before you spend any money on either software or consulting. Now that seems a little crazy to a lot of people and I really am here to say there is no gimmick in here. Our goal is to create solutions that you can benefit from. So the main idea with using a free trial is we don't wanna create an artificial reason to move forward with purchasing software. We believe that the right time to buy technology is when you've actually determined how the technology will solve a problem. So in addition to having a free trial and having, for lack of a better word, um, enough time to really evaluate it, we also focus during the risk-free prototype on defining what we call the top three to five issues. So the, the idea here is that we believe that what leads to real success is having a super crystal clear understanding of the problems that you're solving and a really high level of confidence that the particular solutions that have been created solve those problems. So the risk-free prototype enables us to do that. It enables us to really get into detail about your specific issues, and it enables you to really see how those issues will be solved in a real-world environment. The third thing we do during risk-free trial is we start with your data. The data is not something we deal with at the end of the trial. It's something we deal with at the beginning. So one of the first things that we ask for is a collection of as much data as you're willing to share. And obviously we sign an NDA and do things like that so your data is protected legally. But the point is we wanna model as much of the prototype on your real data structure as possible. Now accounts and contacts are kind of basic information. You know, it's company names, it's phone numbers, it's, it's basic stuff. I'm also talking about other sort of enterprise level data that could also be included in your trial, such as product data, pricing information, if you're using data as part of your quoting processes, we strongly recommend that we um, receive or we request as much of that as possible. And there's a real specific reason for that. If we get a spreadsheet of product data, for example, or let's say we get pricing data, we can actually model the data model in the trial based on real data. So instead of building a fictitious thing that is kind of like what you want, we're actually using the data um, that you really will be using. And we use it and we build the real structure that we eventually go forward with. So just as a side note, most of our clients, after they go through the risk-free prototype, ha don't have a whole lot of implementation-related details left over. It's usually after implementation. It's a little bit of training, a little bit of refinement, but a lot of the heavy lifting's already been done. So another part of getting, receiving your data is that once we have the data, we can configure your dashboards and your reports using real information. It also gives us an idea of how information may need to be translated or modified or maybe repurposed so that you can use some of the dashboards that drive the behavior in your team. So um, as much data as we can get, we find is very, very valuable. The, the other thing a risk-free prototype allows us to do is start to identify issues that you may have with your user adoption, it, which means it helps us begin to define a strategy that we'll use for training content. Now, in one of my other videos, I show some examples of how we implement a training strategy with a client, and we show um, what we call our training tab, where we actually include links to training videos that have been created specifically for our client. Many of those things that we're identifying in that training content came out of that risk-free prototype. So again, it's a really important step to identify what problems we're solving, how are we gonna solve them, and how are we gonna train our users so that they can solve that problem. The other thing the risk-free prototype gives you is the ability to include your team in the validation of the prototype. Now, we may not be solving every single problem that you're gonna um, solve on day one of your go live, but like I said a few minutes ago, we're gonna identify those top three to five issues so your team can begin to see 
and actually use the prototype and validate that yes, this will work. So we actually have quite a few clients where we've actually created some of the training content and then we train those users on how to use the new solution and they actually start to use the system while it's still in prototype. So again, our strategy and our goal rather is to you know, reduce risk and maximize likelihood of success. And the risk-free prototype is a phenomenal tool that enables us to do that. And finally, a risk-free prototype helps us identify any other go-live risks. If there's something that you didn't know about your data or something that you didn't necessarily know about a user group or whatever it is, the risk-free prototype is a great platform that enables you to do that. So I'd like to invite you to just watch some of our other content about other techniques that we're using to reduce risk and maximize success. And if you haven't prototyped um, your Salesforce implementation yet, certainly let us know and we'd love to chat with you about some of the things that you're trying to solve for. And like always, if you liked this video, please hit the like button that helps us tremendously. Also consider subscribing um, so that you can be notified when um, we release weekly content. If you'd like to comment, please add a comment. Share this with anybody on your team that you think would benefit from it. And finally, if you have any questions or would like to talk any further about this, I've included a link to my calendar in the description below, and I'd love to chat with you about some of the issues and some of the, the concepts that you're considering. Thank you.